Hello, one and all, and welcome to something a little bit different. Welcome to Kieran Brennan's XFL cast. That's right, the Hall of Wrestling podcast is changing out just a little bit, because we are here, and we are going to discuss Vince McMahon's XFL. This is just going to be a very... It'll be short enough. We're going to look through the XFL. I have never watched any sort of American football, ever, really. I'm just not overly into it, to be honest. Um, But I think this is a... The, the launch of the XFL is a good excuse to, you know, try it out, learn something new, pick up a new sport. Who knows if it'll succeed or fail or what's going to happen, but I'm very interested to see what's going to happen, you know? It is a, it's, it's very interesting time. And, you know, figured, hey, we got, it's 12 weeks long, fuck it, may as well record it, record what I think. Um, and you can see me slowly, hopefully, fingers crossed, slowly get into it. Um, I don't know any of the rules. At all of any American football, I don't understand anything about it. Nobody's names mean anything. I do not know anyone in this, um. So it's it. This is genuinely going to be me learning over the next twelve or so weeks, um. What the fuck this sport is? <laughs> There's forty games, I believe, in the season. In this season, I will not be watching all forty games. Um, I will try to be watching all of my team's games. We will get to that soon. Um, but you know we'll see what happens. You know, busy, busy time, busy, busy bee, busy, 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 busy bee. I am, as I'm sure you are well aware. Um, to anyone li- tuning in and listening to this just randomly, my name is Karen Brennan. I am the Holly Wrestling Podcast champion. You are probably listening to this via either the Holly Wrestling Podcast YouTube or the Holly Wrestling Podcast Spotify. Either way, it doesn't really fucking matter. Maybe SoundCloud. I think we have SoundCloud. Do we? I don't fucking know. I'm usually joined with my host, the man G- genetics forgot, Reen Nocter, but I wanted to do this little solo thing um, where I can go into a fair bit of detail about the XFL. Because I'm sure we will be bringing it on to our main podcast that you can listen to, you know, YouTube, Spotify, SoundCloud. But this is a little place where I can, you know, probably look into it and report on some of the news or just do whatever. This episode, we are preseason. Um, it is it is Monday the 3rd of February, at least for me in Ireland, um, and the season will begin on Saturday. We'll go through all the games soon, and I just wanted to make this episode as a little like rundown of what to expect, what I think so far, who my team is, what I think of all the uniforms and shit, all that sort of stuff, and then 12 episodes, the next 12 episodes will be about the games, who's winning, who I like seeing play. What I'm, what I'm enjoying about this, hopefully enjoying. That would be nice if I could, you know, enjoy this. <laughs> but who knows what's going to happen. Um, I think that about does it for a bit of an intro. Yeah, I, 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 th- I think it should. Like I said, this this will be a, a short episode. I'm not going to go insanely into detail because, you know, I don't really know anything. I just want to kind of, you know, lay the groundwork, get myself used to this, get into this. Um, it was a nice excuse to start looking at loads of XFL stuff. Um, so we'll start with uh, a brief history of the XFL. You probably know, if you're listening to a podcast about it, that this is not the first incarnation of the Extreme Football League. Um, Vince McMahon, owner of the WWE, you know, which you probably know, he, about 20 years ago, attempted to create the XFL as a... a a alternative, a more extreme, you know, um, alternative to the NFL, which, you know, he deemed was like clamping down to too many rules. The rules of the XFL would be looser. They, they'd be slightly different um, and just allow for a bit more chaos and kind of take away the boring moments from the NFL and um, make the sport as a whole a fair bit more exciting to watch as a viewer. Now, look... NFL is extremely popular in America. I don't know if it was deemed... I don't know if you'd say it was necessary to take away some of these rules that Vince McMahon, you know, seemed to think made the game slower. But it, it didn't It didn't really work. It, it started out strong numbers, but as the season went on, totally petered out. And by the end, it was cancelled. After, after one season of the XFL, it was done. It's regarded as one of Vince McMahon's greatest failures. And I think it was 2018, about two years ago, when he announced the return of the XFL. It was a massive surprise. No one ever thought he'd try and relive this. Um, you know, it'd be like if he brought back the, the World Bodybuilding Federation, which is a real thing. <laughs> which also, you know, it, it was a bit of a failure. 
But credit where credit is due, Vince, he's trying this again. He's trying this idea again. And I, I do hope it works out. I'd love to love this. I, I'd love to, because I'm not really a big sporty guy. The, the closest thing to a sport I watch is probably wrestling. And, you know, sport aspects to it. But I watch wrestling more for the story, naturally. Um, like most people who watch wrestling. This will be the first sport that I really try and keep up on and try and keep my head in the game for. The only other proper, proper sport that I've tried to keep up on is rugby, but that that, that was a long time ago at this stage. I, I was young enough where keeping up on meant more I'd go to my team's games and hope they won. <laughs> and that was about it. Um, that's, that's your brief history of the XFL, I think. I think that'll about do it. Um, it's back is really all you need to know. It failed and now it's back. Um, it's it's being run in the off season of the NFL. The NFL, the Super Bowl at the time of this recording, was last night, I believe. I believe yes, I, I believe it was last night. Um, and now you know a week later, the XFL starts. So it's kind of like hey. You know, football's gone. Uh, uh-uh. no, it's not. Keep watching the XFL. Vince is trying to prey on the people who have that habit of, you know, watching um, watching uh, football every weekend as a group. It's similar to what he does with Raw and SmackDown, uh, mainly Raw, where a lot of the time people would get people would get together. They'll watch a big sporting event on Monday nights, and Vince's hope. Like keeping his big three hour show on Monday nights is that people will continue to get together and watch, you know, when that when their sport is non, they're gonna watch Monday Night Raw. That hasn't really worked out for him, but he he's given it a red hot go. And this is, you know, to an extent, an extension of that. Um my team. I don't have much experience in America. I don't have much connection to any of the places in there. Um we do have our eight teams. I will list them all for you now before I reveal my one. We have the DC Defenders, which is a very nice name. The Dallas Renegades, the New York Guardians, the I think it's the Longhorn Roughnecks, I believe is what they're called, and um, the Seattle Battlehawks, or is it what is it? Is it Seattle? Couldn't fucking tell you. Um, I should have this here. The Seattle Battlehawks. Will we call them that? Or will we properly look it up? Am I bothered looking it up? Do I care that much? Does anyone really care that much? <laughs> oh, I'm bad at this. And I do apologize for that. Um, the Seattle Dragons. I'm sorry. The, there's the Seattle Dragons. Is it the St. Louis Battlehawks? There's... Okay. Let's start from the beginning. There's the Seattle Dragons, DC Defenders, Houston Roughnecks, um, Los Angeles Wildcats, Tampa Bay Vipers, New York Guardians, St. Louis Battlehawks, and the Dallas Renegades. Those are your eight teams. My chosen team are the Dallas Renegades. Mainly, uh, there's two big factors. One, I'm looking up stuff, trying to do a bit of research, and they seem to be the one people are gravitating towards the most as, like, the favorites going in, and no one wants to, you know, support the losing team. Um, because that, that hurts so much. <laughs> um, I, I have an uncle who supports the Mets, and he's just in pain every time they play, because he, he knows they used to be so good, and now they're just, you know... A shadow of their former self. I went to one baseball game. No, I went to two baseball games. And he was just screaming at the pitcher. In just such frustration. Because he loves the Mets. But they suck. And oh, I, I don't want to be like him. I don't I don't, I don't want to hate whichever team I support. And because this is the first, first season of the XFL. I do reserve the right to change my team. And provided the XFL gets a second season. And provided that I enjoy it. The New York Guardians. I, I wouldn't mind supporting because new york is a place i went to it's the only place in america i've ever been to um so that'd be nice but also the dallas renegades have a fucking nice logo it is so good looking it's this beautiful um okay, maybe beautiful is a bit of a weird, weird way to describe it it's it's just like it's a renegade you know it's it's kind of like a, a bandit type person where he has like a, a little a little what, what do you call him like handkerchief type thing over his mouth he has red eyes and a cowboy hat he's pretty fucking cool looking um, and they use the baby blue color scheme. It's very nice. Um, Rain Nocter, 
um, co-host of the Horror Racing Podcast, my other podcast that you can I'm sure you can listen to right now. Um, he's picked the Seattle, no, not Seattle, which one of the Battlehawks? The, the, the St. Louis Battlehawks. Um, Battlehawk is a very American name. Jeez. <laughs> um, oh, best of luck, Rain. I, I believe we are in the first game together. Yeah. Are we? Yeah, we are, both our team's first game is against each other. We'll get to the schedule shortly, though. Um, so, Dallas Renegades. That's my pick. I fucking hope that they do well. I it would it would be nice to win something for once. Um, I got yeah. It, it would just it would just be nice. The odds seem in their favor. Is it is it cheating to just pick the one that like the odds are in their favor rather than the one that like I, I care about the most? I'm not sure. I got this little um Athlon Sports made an article of like preseason XFL power rankings. Their number one was Dallas Renegades. Let me just read out an extract from that. Um, the Renegades have generated the most preseason hype over the last few months. It started when they hired Bob Stops, uh, the, former Opla- the former Oklahoma Sooners head coach, to lead this franchise as head coach and general manager. This will be the first head coaching job at the pro level for Stoops, and his name was the first one to be announced when the league revealed its head coaches late last year. The hope is that the success he generated at Oklahoma will translate over to the XFL. Stoops is the only one among the XFL's eight coaches to win a college football national title in 2000. In, 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 in 2000. Um, sorry about that, it's a bit of a stutter. Uh, and he has the most total championships among this group as well, 12. In order to make this transition a smooth one, Stoops will have former three former Sooners, including quarterback Laundry Jones, on his roster. He also hired Hal Moom, the godfather of the spread offense, as his offensive coordinator. The Renegades will make their home at Globe Life Stadium, the former home of uh, MLB's Texas Rangers, which has been renovated for this team. Uh, Stoops has a 14-8 record in the Dallas-Fort Worth area thanks to the Red River showdown with Texas which is played at the Cotton Ball every Cotton Bowl every year. Very cool. Very very neat stuff. That this that that, that article is kind of what persuaded me like fuck it. I'll, I'll go with these guys. This guy seems to know what he's doing. Um don't let me down, Mr. Stoops. What's your name? Ben Stoops is it? Bob Stoops. Don't let me down, Mr. Bob Stoops. That would be greatly appreciated from me and everyone else here and yeah. Yeah. Don't don't fuck it up, please. I'm begging you. Um, I wanted to have a quick look at the uniforms in this episode, just like you know, just going through them all, telling you what I think. I'll I'll describe them even if it isn't very helpful, but I I, I don't know. We'll we'll see what happens. So the first one I have here is the defenders uniform, the DC defenders uniform. It's this. It's this really nice. It's you know your standard red. You know the standard like bright red. And with white stripes along it. The helmet is quite nice. It, they have this, um, like, two lightning bolts creating an X symbol with three stars in it as their, like, logo. It's a very nice-looking helmet. The helmets in the in the XFL as a whole, they're pretty nice-looking. Um, I, I, I think, anyway. Um, the Renegades, they have... Okay, we, we have... Not they, we. <laughs> um, we have this, like, baby blue type thing. It's very, very light blue and black. It's not the the nicest looking thing, but our helmet is okay. It's probably admittedly one of the weaker helmets. It the bandit, you know, um icon just looks a little it doesn't look quite right. It it doesn't look quite so natural. Maybe it's because it is a head, you know, like a human head type thing, that it looks a bit weird. It's just a floating head, whereas everything else is a little bit more abstract, so you can kind of get away with it more. I'm not sure. It looks fine. It just doesn't look amazing. Um, next, we have the New York Guardians. Okay, these, these guys have this, like, this nice black, white, and orange look going on. Um, it's okay. It's a little generic, but their helmet is lovely, I think. Um, they have this lion with red teeth and red eyes. It's very nice. I recommend looking this one up because this is, oh my, <laughs> um, the Houston Roughnecks next. They also have red, except they also there. There's like a red, white, and blue type thing. I don't really like their like their pants are white and their top is red. I don't like the color combination. Their helmet is quite nice though. Um, their logo kind of stands out. It's just like this big H 
looks a bit weird, but it is like a, a metallic -y, silvery, like chrome, chrome helmet. It looks very nice, I, I think. Um, the Battlehawks, the what are the St. Louis Battlehawks, they have this nice blue, they do, and their helmet has this like wings on them, you know, because hawks or whatever, hawks fly. It's, it's very nice, it's a very nice helmet. I'm, I'm losing my mind over all the helmets, man, I don't know why. Um, it, it's, an, it's a very nice kit, it is a very nice kit. And that's Reen, Reen's one, maybe he'll pick up a jersey at some stage, it's quite expensive though, 80. Then again, I don't think $80 is too much of a ripoff for a jersey, in America at least. I don't fucking know. Um, the Vipers next, they have, they're very, it's the most out here set of colors. It's this really lime green, like it, the helmet is a really lime green. The, the like the, the cage type thing, the bars around the head, they protect your head, is this orange. And um, very strong colors. It's a bit out there. I don't think it'll look very nice, to be honest. Although, maybe they'll blend into the grass and the pitch. I don't fucking know. It's not the best. Um, the Seattle Dragons. All right, now, the Seattle Dragons helmet is very nice. Because it has this gorgeous dragon coming out of it. It's a white helmet with this big green, orange, like, dragon. Very nice looking. Their, um, their jersey. It has these really dark greens, but it's mainly this, like, deep navy blue. Which I really like. I really like theirs. I gotta say. I don't really have any complaints with theirs. Um, and I believe, is it our last one? Yes. The Los Angeles Wildcats are like this. Um, it almost reminds me of Autumn. Because it's red, orange, and blue. This like deep, dark, navy blue. Um, it's really nice looking. Their helmet's nice looking as well. It's classic. It's just an LA as their logo. So it's nothing insane. But it's it feels real classic. To me, at least. Not that I know what fucking classic is in sports. Especially fucking NFL. I, I couldn't tell you for the life of me, though. But th this this jersey really appeals to me. Um, for whatever reason. So, go Wildcats. Go Dallas. Re re um, what are we called? Renegades more, though. <laughs> I'm a great fan, as, as you can well tell. Um, okay, how about we go through... How about we go through the schedule... Go through the 12-week um, schedule of, like, matches and shit. What do you call them? Matches? Games? The American call them games or other matches. I don't fucking know. <laughs> um, okay, week one. This is February the 8th on a Saturday. Very soon upcoming. The first ever XFL game of this new season. Seattle Dragons versus DC Defenders. Um, go for it, I suppose. Uh, then later on that day, we have Los Angeles Wildcats versus Houston uh, Roughnecks. February 9th, um, we have the Tampa Bay Vipers versus the New York Guardians. And then, in the match that I will definitely be watching, I don't know about the other three, but I will definitely be watching this one, the St. Louis Battlehawks versus the Dallas Renegades. I am very much looking forward to this. Get to see my boys in action, and I'll get the kick reading after his ass, as usual. Um, week 2, Saturday, Saturday, February 15th, the New York Guardians versus the DC Defenders, followed by the Tampa Bay Vipers versus Seattle Dragons. February 16th, on a Sunday, we have the Dallas Renegades versus the New York, the, sorry, the Los Angeles Wildcats and the St. Louis Battlehawks versus the Houston Rednecks. Roughnecks. I didn't mean to say redneck. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, week 3, Saturday, February 22nd, with the Houston Roughnecks versus Tampa Bay Vipers um, and the Dallas Roughnecks. No, Dallas Renegades, they've written Roughnecks here, versus the Seattle Dragons. And 23rd on a Sunday, the New York Guardians versus St. Louis Battlehawks, and the DC Defenders versus the Los Angeles Wildcats. Week 4, Saturday, February 29th, the Los Angeles Wildcats versus the New York Guardians, and the Seattle Dragons versus St. Louis Battlehawks. Uh, Sunday, March 1st, Houston Roughnecks versus Dallas Renegades. The DC Defenders versus Tampa Bay Tampa Bay Vipers. Week 5 on March 7th, the Saturday, with the Houston Roughnecks versus Seattle Dragons, and the Dallas Renegades versus New York Guardians. I'm looking forward to that one. Um, the next day on the March the 8th, a Sunday, we have the DC Defenders versus St. Louis Battlehawks and the Los Angeles Wildcats versus Tampa Bay Vipers. Week 6, Saturday, March 14th, with the New York Guardians versus Houston Roughnecks. And the Tampa Bay Vipers versus the St. Louis Battlehawks. March uh, 15th on a Sunday, the DC Defenders versus Dallas Renegades. And the 
Seattle Dragons versus Los Angeles Wildcats. Week 7, we're getting into the home stretch now. Um, the 21st, a Saturday, um, Tampa Bay Vipers versus Dallas Renegades. St. Louis Battlehawks versus Los Angeles Wildcats. Sunday, March 22nd, Seattle Dragons versus New York Guardians. Houston Roughnecks versus DC Defenders. Week 8, Saturday, March 29th. DC Defenders versus Tampa Bay Vipers. New York Guardians versus St. Louis Battlehawks. March 30th, on a Sunday, the Los Angeles Wildcats versus Houston Roughnecks. And the Dallas Renegades versus Seattle Dragons. I want to see that one. For some reason, I want to see that one. Um, week 9, Thursday, the 2nd of April. Houston Roughnecks versus Dallas Renegades. And the New York Guardians versus DC Defenders. April 5th, we have the St. Louis Battlehawks versus the Tampa Bay Vipers. And the Los Angeles Wildcats versus Seattle Dragons. That weekend, I believe, would be a WrestleMania weekend. Huh. I wonder if they clash. That would be very interesting on Vince McMahon's part. Week 10, uh, Thursday, the 9th of April, the Dallas Renegades versus Los Angeles Wildcats. Saturday, the 11th of April, we have the Seattle Dragons versus Houston Roughnecks. Sunday, 12th of April, um, we have the St. Louis Battlehawks versus DC Defenders. Tampa Bay Vipers versus New York Guardians. Then, on April 18th and 19th, we have the playoff. We have the East number two seed at East number one seed. Uh, on the 18th and on the 19th, the West number two seed uh, at West number one seed. I don't quite know what that means. I think it means the top four teams playoff. I assume. I can only assume that. And then the following week, we have for the XFL championship, East versus West on at 3 p.m. Eastern time. And that'll be broadcast on ESPN. And I'm on a Sunday. That that could be very exciting. I, I, I'm looking forward to that. I'm probably going to watch the playoffs. I'm probably going to watch the championship. Whether or not my team makes it in purely because, you know, I, I'd like to keep doing this. So far, I've enjoyed it. Even if, you know, <laughs> I haven't, haven't, actually, haven't actually watched any of the games yet. I hope it's not the type of thing where just it's, it's one of the things that I, I like in my head. Yawning. Oh, my gosh. Oh. Oh. I hope it's not one of the things that I like in my head a lot more than I like in reality. That would be very disappointing for me. Um, how about we take a quick look through the rosters? Um, I believe it was on CBS.com that I've gotten these from. It's a very quick, like, here's who, what which players you should look out for. Um, okay, the Dallas Renegades. Their stadium, Globe Life Park. Head coach, um, Bob Stoops. Players to know. Uh, R.B. Cameron, Artis Payne, D.B. Darren Smith, L.B. What is what do all those initials mean? Oh, okay. So L.B. is like what? Left back? Left back, Ray Ray Davison. Right back, Lance Dunbar. D.C. Defenders, Stadium, Audi Field. Head coach, Pep. Pep Hamilton. Players to know, quarterback, uh, Cardale Jones. DB, I wonder what that means. Um, defensive back, maybe? I don't know. Matt Ellum, RB, Donald Pumphrey, RB, Jarrell Presley, WR, Rashad Ross, oh, that's alliteration, DT, J. Bromley. Um, sounds like a great team. <laughs> the Houston Roughnecks. And the stadium is the TDECU Stadium. Head coach, June Jones. Players to know, quarterback, Connor Cook. LB, uh, D, Marcus Gates. DE, Coney Ely. Okay. Los Angeles Wildcats Stadium, Dignity Health Sports Park. Head coach, Winston Moss. Players to know, WR, Nelson Spruce. OL, Storm Norton. LB, Trey Williams. TE, Brandon Barnes, RB, Elijah Hood. Not Elijah Wood, Elijah Hood. I love The Lord of the Rings, and I watched um, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind recently. Very good film. Lord of the Rings is, of course, better, but Eternal, Sun Eternal Sunshine is quite good as well. Um, the New York Guardians, their stadium is the MetLife Stadium. I was there. Very nice stadium. It's really lovely in there, I, I, I thought. Anyway, um, the head coach... 
Kevin Gilbride, players to know, W.R. Melk, Mekke, 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 that's good, <laughs> C.B. Jamar Summers, uh, R.B. Darius Victor, L.B. Ben Heaney, um, the St. Louis Battle Hawk Stadium, The Dome, Head coach, Jonathan Hayes. I know Jonathan Hayes. Players to know, W.R. Demornay Pearson L. L.B. Terrence Gavin. D.B. Will Hill. Will Hill. What is with these names? What the fuck is wrong with you, America? C.B. Kenny Robinson. The Seattle Dragons. Their, their stadium is the Century Field. Uh, Century Link Field. Uh, head coach Jim Zorn, players to know, quarterback Brandon Silvers, WR, Keenan Reynolds, RB, Kenneth Farrow, DT, Will Sutton. Um, and our final one, the Tampa Bay Vipers, their stadium is the Raymond James Stadium, their head coach is Mark Trestman, players to know, quarterback Aaron Murray, and WR, Tanner McAvoy. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> Oh, that took it out of me. Okay, there you there you have it, folks. That's that's our that's CBS's little like. Hey, here's who here's who you need to know on each team. Keep an eye out for those names, I suppose, when I'm watching, um, the match. Like I say, I don't know how many I'll be watching this weekend. I'll definitely watch the Dallas Renegades one. I'll report to you on that next week when I do it. Yeah, assuming I remember to, I, I I think I have a bad habit of starting things, and never finishing them. Although because this is only like what twelve weeks long. Excuse me. Well, I think it would be a bit more likely. Um, although I don't know how long a football game is. Like an American football game or an XFL game. Hmm. I hope it's not too long. Ah, we'll be fine. Don't worry about it. Don't even stress. Um, so big gimmick of the XFL. Um, I think this is our final little segment here. A big gimmick of the XFL is, yes, it is our final segment. Um, is that, you know, there's slightly different rules. Some are probably for the best, some are probably from the worst. But I figure I'll just take this little opportunity and list out the ones. These these are the need the need to know rules. Um this is also from the CBS one. So the kickoffs, this is one of the biggest changes, and they they're intricate. Now, before we get into this, I do not know what any of this means. I have no idea what the rules of this sport are. Whether it's XFL or NFL. Couldn't fucking tell you. That's why I'm saying it's going to be a bit weird and clunky and interesting to do this. Because I really have no idea what the fuck I am on about. I'm making this up as I go along. Okay. Here we go. Um, basically, the kicker lines up at his 30-yard line while the coverage team will line up at the receiving team's 35-yard line. While the receiving team will line up at its own 30. Other than the kicker... No one else can move until the kick returner touches the ball. Still confused? Question mark. Uh, then it just goes to a video. Points after conversions. There will be no extra points. Instead, the offense will line up at either the second yard line, the five yard line, or ten yard line. Successful conversions from those spots are worth one, two, and three points, respectively. If the defense causes a turnover and returns the ball to the opponent's end zone. The resulting score is equal to the number of the points the offense was attempting to score on its PAT. P-A-T. It's all in caps. I don't, I don't know what that means. Um, punting. Basically, a punting team can't kick a coffin corner um, as any ball that goes out of bounds inside the 35-yard line or through the end zone is considered a major touchback. The ball would then be moved up to the 35-yard line. However... Downing a deep punt in the opponent territory will be harder as a punting team's gunner cannot cross the line of the scrimmage until the ball is kicked, though they can move laterally. <sighs> Jeez. Defenders are also not allowed to cross the line of the scrimmage until the ball is kicked. The double forward pass. This is illegal elsewhere, everywhere else in American football, but the XFL is allowing it. Ooh, extreme. As long as the first forward pass is made behind the line of scrimmage, that that team can follow can throw 
a second forward pass, provided it is also behind the lines of the scrimmage. Um, over time, the XFL will use five rounds in its overtime to determine a winner. Uh, think shout-outs in the NHL or penalty kicks in soccer. Okay, that makes more sense. Um, each team will have an opportunity to score two points from the opponent's five-yard line. If after five rounds, both teams are still tied, overtime will move through single sudden death style uh, rounds until there is a winner. And then this is the final few rules. Um, 25 second play clock. Each team will have two one minute timeouts per half. There will be no coaches challenges uh, challenges, and all plays will be subject to review from the replay official. Um, catches will require only one foot to be in bounds like college football. And the final one. There's only 10 minute half times, which I find very interesting because, you know, halftime shows are a big part of NFL. Um, and it's always a good time to, you know, go to the fucking bathroom or some shit and like half times and stuff. Well, I don't know. If we're gonna, uh, <laughs> that, I, I think that'll about, that'll about do it, I believe, for this week's episode of the. I, I think this is getting called the uh, uh, XFL cast, although I haven't checked if someone else is using that, so. If it's titled something different, then I, it, it someone else does that. And um, thank you for tuning into this. Next week we'll be talking about the big game, the um, the Dallas Renegades versus the Saint Louis Saint Louis Battlehawks. I'm really looking forward to this. I, I'm really curious to see if I like this sport or not. Um, and I'm curious to see if over time I can like, grow to like it. If I don't, we have at least ten weeks worth of games from the. Um, Dallas Renegades. So we, I, I, I have that to look forward to. Hopefully, we can win a few. Um, hopefully, we can get to at least the playoffs. At the very least, the playoffs. That'd be very nice. It'd be a great, you know, first season for me to follow this. I please do watch it. Try and try. I believe ESPN is broadcasting that Dallas Renegades game. Um, so give it a watch. Maybe I'll buy a jersey at some point. Maybe I'll, yeah, that'd be kind of neat. Especially if like if ratings for this start to get into the shit. I might buy just buy a jersey, just like you know, just to be like, yeah, I got this, you know, in, in case they want they have to shut down again, because it, it is a very nice design. It it's a really nice design for like a, a little mascot. It's what appealed me to the entire thing in the first place. Um, yeah, okay, and I'll just get a little. I should have the rest of the matches. Yeah, okay, this week. So next week we'll be talking about. The Seattle Seahawks versus DC Defenders. The LA Wildcats versus the Houston... Where's the Hudson? Hudson Roughnecks. Tampa Bay Vipers versus the New York Guardians. And the St. Louis... Um, St. Louis Battlehawks versus the Dallas Renegades. That's all coming next week. Thank you very much for listening. I have been your host, the Immaculate Karen Brennan. Um, I have a second podcast, the Hobby Wrestling Podcast, presumably... You're listening to it from that very podcast feed. I couldn't fucking tell you. Um, it's been a pleasure. I hope we. I hope this works out. I hope we can win them. I'll see you guys next week. And as I say at the end of every episode of the XFL podcast, go go Renegades, go!